So this this is intended more as a open discussion rather than a particular state of where we're at here. So this is uh, something that came out of the BPF steering committee. We have a proposal for uh, some a statement of work for some improvements we want in LLVM. So uh, the, the goal of this presentation is pretty much just that folks know that the, this is something that the BPF steering committee is looking at. Uh, share what we currently know and gather feedback from the community. So a quick overview, probably this is a pretty well known, but essentially what LLVM does in this part is translates from C or some other high level language to IL and then to bytecode. It performs a variety of optimizations. And the problem is certain optimizations that LLVM does cause issues with the verifier in that it produces code that is correct but the verifier is unable to verify. Uh, often developers have to work around this by producing inline assembly. If you take a look at, for instance, the Tetragon code, it has large amounts of inline assembly whose purpose is to work around issues in the verifier. Likewise, uh, the non-Linux, the prevail verifier, which is not the one in the Linux kernel, but it's one used by other projects, it has is broken by a particular optimization that LLVM does where it produces correlated branches. Uh, one of the other sort of features we, that would be useful to extend LLVM with is the ability to gather code coverage on your BPF programs. Because today, there's no really good way to determine how well you're testing your BPF programs, particularly for the cases where your BPF programs get larger. For example, like the Cilium ones, they can be many thousands of lines of code and it becomes very challenging to understand, okay, do my test, do my test cases cover the BPF code? Uh, that's obviously not yet supported by BPF. One of the big challenges there is that as the code is translated from BPF bytecode into machine code by the JIT compiler, any, any sort of instrumentation that LLVM might introduce for code coverage is going to be lost. So we, we expect this probably would require some form of kernel support or possibly some way to transmit the information about the requirement for these uh, code coverage hints to be transmitted from the LLVM compiler and the profiling tools into kernel. That'd be one approach. There may be, there may be other better approaches. So that's why I'm hoping to get feedback on that, what the sort of what the thoughts are, if this is necessary, if there's a better way of doing this. Uh, one of the other interesting things is that the, at least based on my understanding, the, the developer can provide hints in the form of likely and unlikely to the compiler, which allows the compiler to produce more optimal code. But again, uh, this information is essentially lost as the BPF program is, as the C program is translated to BPF, where this information could potentially be useful to the JIT compiler but it is not necessarily available simply because it's not transmitted or it's not maintained in the ELF file or any form. So a more advanced JIT compilers could potentially leverage this to produce more optimal code uh, or possibly even adds for support for things like PGO within the kernel, where the kernel could then examine how the code behaves and improve its behavior and improve its performance. Um, so, so one of the suggestions, one of the possible options we have for improving the verification failures, at least, is to allow the developers to write explicit assertions within the code, certain things that they believe should be true, that then the LLVM and verifier could check against their internal state and provide much more immediate feedback to the developer saying, okay, this is why verification is failing because this assertion you made, you made is not true. Uh, this is implicitly done through the code today and that by, through the behavior of the code, but it's often a challenge for the developers to understand, okay, for a particular failure, what was it that the verifier didn't like about my code? Uh, one, other, one other approach we, that might be possible is to move the verification, not, not the authoritative verification, but more of a test verification into the LLVM comp compilation stage. Because one of the challenges today often is that the uh, the developer has to wait until they've attempted to load their BPF program to determine whether or not it's safe, which 
tends to break the inner loop of development in that the developer doesn't get immediate feedback about a change they made is calling, causing a verification failure, but instead they've got to go through the entire effort of loading, compiling, and executing the program to determine whether or not uh, it fails verification. Uh, so if LLVM could, you know, so the, the idea of you not being that the verification by LLVM is trusted per se, but rather this would be a hint to the developer saying, hey, this program is probably not going to verify within the Linux kernel because of the following behavior in the program. Uh, likewise, it might even be possible then to use that same information to feed back into the LLVM's uh, optimizer to prevent it from producing suboptimal code. Uh, so some, some background on the Prevail Verifier. The Prevail Verifier is a verifier used by the uh, several different projects, including eBPF for Windows. It is built on a branch of mathematics known as abstract interpretation. It's a field that's commonly used for static analysis beyond outside of just BPF, but uh, is yeah, used for BPF. What it does is it produces a control flow graph from the BPF program. It then walks that control flow graph in weak topographical order, examining each instruction in isolation to determine its pre-invariance and post-invariance, as well as any assertions that would need to be true for this program to be safe. The benefits of this is it executes in polynomial time compared to the verifier which runs in Linux, which essentially is a path-based verifier. The Linux path-based verifier essentially is ex exponential time and requires pruning of paths to reduce the, the time. The challenge there with LLVM and Prevail is the LLVM optimizer has will fold paths. And this essentially means that instead of duplicating code and output in bytecode, it will, for instance, uh, synthesize flags that are set then when the, the test is then performed once a flag is set and avoids and permits LLVM to skip having to reevaluate the condition. This, this generates what we refer to as correlated branches. Correlated branches are essentially branches where if branch A is taken, then branch B is always taken. And likewise, conversely, if branch A is not taken, branch B is never taken. The challenge with that obviously is that because the uh, abstract interpretation approach treats each instruction isolation. There isn't currently a way to track the correlation between two particular branch statements. Unfortunately, with the highest level of optimization, this, this tends to occur frequently within the Cilium code base, which becomes a challenge uh, as we're attempting to port Cilium to Windows. So one of the workarounds work we sort of face at the moment is to uh, do things like making certain pointers volatile, which prevents Prevail from making the assumption that a check that it previously performed is still valid. Uh, this is less than ideal because there are other side effects and produces often slightly less optimal code. So here's a, so just an entirely synthetic example. I uh, assume this is just an XTP program. In this case, what we have here is it is you know loading the beginning and the end data. It checks the code with the that the the this that R2 points to a block of memory at least four bytes long, subsequently sets a flag, and then if that flag is true, access to the memory. This is safe, but the challenge here is that because uh, when we actually when the when the uh, Verifier is assessing that branch, the second branch. It has no knowledge that this branch is always going to be true if the previous branch was true. So again, this just point out this is just purely a synthetic example. This is not actually taken from any of the prevail code. Uh, the challenge there being the prevail code becomes a little bit harder to fit on a slide. So possible workarounds or solutions that we've evaluated are. Could we provide finer grade control of the optimization to LLVM? Today, LLVM doesn't expose any flags or ability for us to say, don't perform this particular optimization. Uh, the, other, the, other, the other possible approach might be is 
if some of the researchers in abstract interpretation have a way to resolve this, we might be able to adopt that to the pre-valve verifier. Beyond that, I mean, any other, I'm open to any other suggestions. Uh, that's pretty much the end of my prepared slides. So I was gonna open up for questions or suggestions or any other thing people have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for the fine green control in the LLVM, and uh, we have some discussions in the past with the upstream community, and mm -hmm. uh, it will be very hard and uh, try to poke into the uh, machine independent optimization passes. So, uh, in the last LSF, uh, in the last uh, plumbers, and we discussed with GCG Jose, and uh, uh, most likely we could introduce a, a flag at a compiler level, and uh, for example, like uh, some kind of like a flag, and I forgot the name, and uh, uh, which can and compiler will uh, know with this flag compiler will know, okay, you probably need to do some special things, for example, verifier friendly code. And then this flag will pass down to the passes. And passes may, if this flag is enabled, and may do something different. But this hasn't been implemented yet. So not sure how upstream will react. Hmm. So I guess my other question then is, there, there, are, there are several other things which we'd uh, considered. I'll share my page again here. Uh, so I was wondering, so some, so some of those suggestions within the original statement of work were things like uh, code coverage. Any, I mean, are there any thoughts on, nope, where do I pick, where do I go? Any thoughts on code coverage, adding code coverage support for BPF? Is this something that would be would make sense with, to the community, or does the community think that BPF programs tend to be small enough that this is, uh, or should be, but this is not really super useful? May not be super useful, but will be useful. And I think I talked to Daniel sometimes back about the code coverage, and if anybody interested in it, and welcome to do some implementation on that. So yeah. in that, in that, yeah, is, so would we see this as something that would be in, injected into, how, so would this be something that would be between, between the LF file, or how does, how does the information about where to insert the code coverage probes, what is, what is the sort of thinking on that? What, you know, how would you want to transmit this information and gather this information? And uh, code coverage will need a compiler support, and uh, I think somebody has some old LLVM 12 and try to hack, but I actually tried it, it doesn't work. But you definitely mm -hmm. need some compiler support. And this okay. compiler support probably will add some code in the LLVM, uh, in the generated BPF code. And then you later on take out that information to produce a coverage graph. Can we get pretty close to that just by processing verifier log? It emits every instruction it it processes. Yeah, you can. You do know that which as instructions. Well. Yeah. Being run. I instruction and. Uh, you You'll need the very verbose output, yes. so nothing stream. Yeah. But yeah. Well, while while Jeffy tells you what parts were verified, uh, code coverage is also useful for understanding when you test your BPF programs. Are you in fact hitting all the code paths you expect to hit? So for, for that case, for a specific input to be able to determine, hey, this, this actually hit the expected code paths within the BPF program. And I don't think the verifier, because the verifier will just tell you that all possible paths that might be reached through the program, but not necessarily the ones you're actually actively testing. So, so in terms of the code coverage, do you think we can do it without requiring kernel changes? Would this be purely a BPF and LLVM change without any change to the kernel mode, or do we see kernel mode support required? It will be a kernel change. And uh, you kind of touched it on it a little bit because it's uh, beyond code coverage, it goes into PGO as well. So you not yeah. only want the coverage, but to know like 
<coughs> which part of the program are more frequently executed than the others and potentially give this feedback to the user so they can maybe like optimize it. So it's part of this uh, performance analysis that BPF is used by performance analysis of the kernel and user space, but performance analysis of the program itself currently is somewhat challenging because like this instrumentation doesn't exist and just sample based <coughs> Like you need like efficient way, like perf doing it some, but not to the degree. So this is definitely an area of improvement. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, uh, I think, hmm. sorry, in, uh, in, in Cilium, uh, one of our uh, colleagues, he wrote a tool which is called Cover B. So um, essentially like the way this, the, the way this works um, is to to basically increment a counter in, in, in a map for each um, uh, instructions that was executed. And so right now this is very basic, but it can generate a report afterwards and you can see um, the locations. But I, but I think um, it has limitations because you definitely need kernel support. So maybe we could have like a, even something simple like a single instruction which would bump a counter in the map at a specific offset. Um, to, to gather this data, but it would be useful. Okay. Yeah, because so, so my view on that is if we do decide, to, I would like, I prefer, I think it would be preferable if we could have a more generic mechanism with the, this community implemented via so that we can then maintain parity between various implementations of BPF runtime. So whatever approach we pick, I think it would be ideal if we could have it be something that could be picked up by other implementations of BPF runtime. So, what was the other one? So, one of the other things we discussed was the uh, how to help developers understand why the BPF programs are failing the verification. One of the things which we had we'd asked about was would explicit assertions within the code make sense? Is I mean, is this something that would be valuable, or is this purely just something that uh, the expectation is that the developers should be able to understand from the verifier logs today? So, which verifier you would integrate with with a compiler? Is it like kernel verifier or prevail? I suspect neither fit uh, mm -hmm. into let's say LLVM infrastructure, so they cannot be part of the compiler. So as soon as they're a separate tool, then oh. it doesn't really matter whether it's uh, part of the kernel. Like you can, if the goal is to get the user as soon as possible during program build time, then we can have whatever, like very start, like anything, like running right after compilation and producing producing this error, whether it will load or not, right? So it's it's about like how to, correlate the errors reported by whatever verifier back to the source code uh, to speed up this like loop of like writing the program, compiling, and seeing whether it passes verification or not. So it's really this like build process. So integrating into compiler itself is not the mm. step that's necessary to uh, improve this loop. Well, so what I was wondering there is, I mean, yes, yeah, so definitely for feedback to the developer, I agree. But what about feedback to the optimizer? So essentially, the, one of the challenges there is LVM emits certain optimizations which break verification. I was wondering if it would make sense then to be able to give that feedback directly to LVM optimizer to say, hey, this particular optimization is causing verification to fail. Emit that, ver emit that particular optimization in the spot. I think Jose will talk about it right after lunch. Actually, not about this topic in particular, no. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, clearly, if you want to to influence the optimization passes of the compiler, you need some sort of criteria for that, right? Mm. So, what John Hong was talking about before is to introduce an option like minus op predictable or verifiable, so you can influence the optimization passes. But this will be actually to get the criteria from the external tool that will be the verifier, right? Yeah, so I was thinking there is that uh, today, the, the challenge there would, if we just tell it, uh, switch off its peak optimization globally, 
the risk there is that it could degrade performance in cases where it wasn't necessary to switch, switch off that optimization. So ideally we'd want it to have LLVM only disable optimization in one particular point within the program that is causing issues. Yeah. Well, yeah, on the GCC side, we are, we have the same problems and we are starting thinking about how to actually work this out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> By the way, I have one question about those likely and unlike, unlikely hints. I, I take that is for branches, right? For jumps. Yeah, branches. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, about conveying that to the JIT BPF compilers, I guess we sh we will need to do that by adding a bit to the BPF jump instruction or something, right? Yeah. So I was just wondering. I mean, to me that because uh, my understanding is this, the Linux kernel code with this regular C code is compiled has this, and it has a, it definitely improves performance. Uh, and particularly as, as we make a more advanced shit, if we can understand, okay, which of these paths are likely, less likely, we can optimize it so that there are fewer, fewer branches, fewer branches taken. So. Well, uh, I'm not too excited to be honest about this extra bits. Because at the end, like likely unlikely for the compiler is just layout of basic blocks, right? So when you have it, that's like you when you look at the code, you know what is like likely, what is unlikely. Like it's already by the compiler that generated this code, it kind of told you already. So and the JIT you're talking about, this overly smart JIT that take the BPF ISA and trying to optimize it again. This is actually questionable how much uh, the trade-off between dangers of uh, breaking, uh, of conforming to BPF memory model and squeezing extra optimizations after compiler already optimized from normal language into BPF ASA. So this extra optimization that you want to do after ASA, you are in this very much dangerous zone because the all these JITs currently, like what micro, what uh, what you're doing in Windows, it's uh, really scary from the memory model perspective because, like, <clears throat> whether you're adhering to all of the atomics and everything that is happening, whether when you start like reordering like load stores, is it going to be safe at all? Like to do like I'm sort of arguing more whether such JIT compilers after I say after verify should even exist. And hmm. what you're proposing, like, oh, I want this extra bit of information, likely and like is just one example, to pass like all the way from the from the C to ASA, then to further to this like second level of optimizer. Sure, but that's questionable whether it should be in the first place. Okay, that's fair. That makes sense. Alrighty. Oh, well, thank you for the feedback. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, unless there are any other questions, I think that was the end of my um, presentation. I had a mm. question, if that's all right. This was sure. just jumping back to talking about um, the explicit assertions and feeding them back into the optimizer. Since mm -hmm. a lot of LLVM's optimization passes operate at the level of the intermediate representation, which doesn't necessarily have a, like a specific representation in terms of BPF bytecode, how are you hmm. going to run the verifier on that intermediate state? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, that'll be a challenge. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll thank you. Yeah, I hadn't really thought into that, but yeah. Okay, thank you. What we thought about doing in GCC on that about that was that uh, um, because I don't I mean in GCC it is possible to actually undo an optimization pass. So something that we thought was to have like some sort of uh, verification um, constraint uh, checker, so to say, right? So when you can you can run the optimization passes, then if some particular optimization uh, breaks some uh, constraints or criteria that you have for the code to be uh, not verifiable, but it will be the other way around, right? I mean, 
you could detect constructions that you know are not verifiable, but you still don't know, don't don't have one hundred percent of uh, assurance that it is going to be verifiable. Mm. So, but in GCC at least uh, we are resigned that uh, we will have to have that in terms of the in internal representation of the compiler, and we actually thought about some sort of integrating the verifier, but yeah, this was one big problem with that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I guess the question there really would be that uh, whether or not we could actually run the verification over the IL in the case of the LLVM case. I'm not sure whether or not the IL is sufficiently descriptive and concise to be able to run a something similar to the abstract interpretation over it. That would be something. That would be one possibility I can think of. To, if we want to go with the give the hints to the LLVM optimizer, but. Um, I was just going to add a, a quick comment. The, the, the biggest pain point I have with the LLVM to verifier problem is, is not verifying a single kernel, but it's the fact that my programs are running on lots of different kernels. So I don't even know what verifier you would embed in LLVM, and then you throw the distributions in, which have their own fun garbled set of patches, right, which aren't actually even a stable kernel LLVM or verifier. So uh, I, I think that would be the biggest roadblock from, from our perspective. Hmm. OK. That's, that's interesting feedback. Yeah, I hadn't really considered that. Yeah, also, I think that's why it's better, it would be better to abstract the constraints that the verifiers check for into some sort of more abstract thing, right, for the compilers. And also another problem with running the verifier between optimization passes and undo certain passes is that passes implement, each pass can implement a lot of different transformations, only some of which may be introducing not verifiable constructions, right? So basically uh, having the verifier insert between passes. So I think that's why I think it's, we, we will still need to tell the optimization pass that it's supposed to not generate unverifiable constructs because the, it should be more fine-grained, I think, rather than discard all the transformations made by some particular optimization pass. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, hi, Alan. This is Dave. Uh, so I agree with John and uh, Jose that I think uh, being able to parameterize things because you have things like multiple kernels, you have multiple verifiers and so on, rather than trying to run the verifier itself, if you can um, uh, enumerate what the constraints are that a verifier is and somehow use that in the compilation step, I think that's going to be a lot more general. And I'll talk more about this more generally um, in my talk this afternoon, since I don't think it's specific to just this problem with Clang. So. Yeah, thank you. That sounds great. Alrighty. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. And thank you for the feedback. Thank you very much.